To quote the great Alfred E. Newman, what, me worry? What's up, everybody? Welcome aboard to Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Sunday morning, and of course, every week we go through what happened and what we think is going to happen, and of course, trying to continue to help you do better investing and understand where we're coming from in the markets, and of course, what me worry? There's nothing to worry about, right? Move along, son. There's nothing to worry about because everything is great, and we have no issues whatsoever, and, and of course, we continue to hear the same things over and over and over again of how great the economy is and how great the markets are and how we have to get in. And of course, if we take a look back at, at last week and we saw, you know, there was a, a, a market. If we go back 10 days, we saw that what we, we, what we called on the spot, a blow off rally to the upside based on markets that were oversold. And of course, we saw that. And then, of course, we saw the next subsequent six or seven days to the downside. And of course, we saw on on Friday with a little bit of a hint of a maybe a trade deal in place, the markets took off like a jackrabbit. And of course, we continue to say in our views, the tops of the markets are in for now. We've got a lot of selling to go onto the downside. However, as we look forward, we would think that this being Thanksgiving week, that we might see some selling, but the, the volume, the market's going to be extremely quiet this week. There's not going to be a lot going on, which means you could see some what we call vacuum trades created. You get these big moves on light volume. And of course, that could be part of it. You know, remember, we talked a couple of weeks ago about, uh, weeks ago about painting the tape. <clears throat> and you could get some real tape painting this week because it's going to be light and it's going to be thin. So when we look and we say, you know, how do we project forward? Well, I would think you're going to see some selling pressure coming in for the next couple of weeks. Uh, I think we will have the Santa Claus rally, but I will say that I think the markets will close no more than one or two percent higher than they are now, if not lower. But I don't, I don't expect to see the major collapse this year. I do think the first quarter next year will be uh, a much bigger issue, but we'll get into that later. But I think from here, the high, in my opinion, the highs are definitely in for the year. In my opinion, you're going to start to see some, you know, some selling. And of course, we've talked about looking at underneath the surface of the market. You know, again, the advisors, the pundits, everybody wants to tell you that everything is, is hunky-dory and that the markets can only go higher from here. And this might be the greatest buying opportunity in a lifetime. And and certainly, it, it certainly could be. I, I would never rule out anything. You know, one of the things we, we, we do know about probabilities is never to rule out what can happen because in a trade, from a trader standpoint, uh, we talk about that the improbable happens once a week and the impossible happens once a month. So uh, again, to, to rule out anything would be would be silly. But based on what I'm seeing and, and what's going on here, I don't see a lot of reason to be overly bullish or overly excited about anything here. I, I do see, however, uh, you know, if you were watching the markets on Friday, you saw a major rally that took off out of nowhere. And of course, it's the whispering of China. Now, I, the question I would ask is, would would that have, would that comment have come out maybe based on that the markets were under a little pressure and and the White House would have liked to have seen a little bit of a rally, so they kind of leaked that out? I can't say one way or the other. I wouldn't. It, nothing would ever surprise me. Okay, that much I will tell you. Nothing ever surprises me about some of the stories and some of the way rumors get spread, because of course people that want to work one side of the market or the other have a tendency, if they have any power, that, to make that happen. And as I've said on this show many times, you have the big banks and a lot of the big places out there that like to do a lot of manipulating of markets because, again, they know that their clients are not going to get out of their position. So if they can is talk about a market going one way, even though they're taking the other side. And that's one of the things. And I actually did get some confirmation on that, that last week from an insider at, at some of these big organizations. Again, I don't want to, I don't want to throw him or her under the bus, but I did get some confirmation that it, in, indeed our facts and our theories are correct. 
that what I've said for over 30 years is that when you have a big call made by somebody, usually they are taking the other side of that market. So as, as we look at the action, you know, what did we see? Well, we had a, a Dow and an S&P that were lower. Uh, it wasn't dramatic. It wasn't, you know, unbelievable. I mean, we did have a huge down day early in the week. But again, I think the key to look at here is the strength of the ind individual markets. When the Dow is the strongest market of all, that simply means that there's more fear in the markets. The Dow being the strongest is more considered more of these safety plays, more of the plays that, you know, that people are not willing and have lost a lot of their risk appetite. And I think that's what we're kind of seeing here. I mean, look at the Russell, it's getting clobbered. Look at the NASDAQ, it's getting clobbered. So when all the strength is in the Dow, that usually means that the actual markets are, are weaker. You know, if you go back to 2008 and 2009, and look at the relationship. The Dow and the NASDAQ, excuse me, the Dow and the S&P are usually trade, the S&P trades at a premium to the Dow. Okay, like today is, in today's value in futures, the S&P contract is worth, let's say, $135,000, okay, for one contract. The Dow, one contract, is worth about 125000 So right now, there's about a 10000 premium s and to Dow. In the height, in the bottom of the market in 09, it was actually inverted. The Dow had more value than the S&P. And, and again, that is something you watch as we talk about the rubber band stretching back and forth. I mean, that is actually one of the trades that I trade. Bullish, sell the Dow, buy the S&P. Bearish, uh, buy, the S buy the Dow, sell the S&P. So, but the key indices to watch in any market is... When there's, when there's a big appetite for risk is always in the NASDAQ and the Russell. That's where the big growth can come from. You, know, you remember when you look a big multinational versus a small cap, who's got a greater chance to make a big explosion of the upside? And obviously that's the small cap. And that's really what we look at. But what we do see is many of the NASDAQ stocks now turning into bear markets. You know, Amazon. You know, Apple's getting close, Google. So again, and, and these are not bad things from a, 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 a trader standpoint. These are opportunities. Again, but I think you've got more room on the downside. Now, one of the things I would always say to you is if you buy, you know, let's say you put away $200 a month and you buy and you keep buying, I would not not buy because I was at this high or at this low. I would just continue to buy. Again, you want to cost average if you're investing. Now, of course, We've said this many, many times that hedging is always the best way to be. Then you don't have to worry about it at all. But in the meantime, I would not stop. You know, re remember one thing that that is 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 interesting is if you're invested properly, you are basically legally printing money. Okay. Now again, obviously it's not quite that easy, but keeping money in the bank, keeping money underneath your mattress, not investing money is not giving you any real growth. So you can work as hard as you want. Okay. But if you're putting away money, okay, and putting it to work in the markets and you have time and you have a longer term time horizon, eventually it will pay you at a, at a rate of approximately 8% year over year and it will compound itself. So again, that's something I think that many of us make that error, okay, about not taking the advantage to hopefully, what we say, print money legally by being invested and watching your investments grow, okay? But I think there is a lot to be worried about. Of course, I said what me worry, but there is a lot to be worried about out there. And I think the first thing we have to look about is household debt is up again for the 17th straight quarter. So when I listen and hear how great the economy is, and again, it's better. Okay, jobs are better. They're paying more money. They can't find enough people to fill all the jobs. There's just a whole bunch of things that, that are out there that, that, that send, signify that the economy is getting better. But if we go back to the stock market and the economy are not related because they're really not, then we have a better understanding. But when we look at uh, more household debt, now again, eventually somebody's going to have to pay this debt. Do we think it's going to magically disappear? And the answer is no, it's not going to magically disappear. At some point, this debt is going to have to be satisfied or forgiven. Okay, We know it's not going to be forgiven. So I think that's something that says that even though we're now working, remember, when we come to spending and we come to living, okay, 
average Americans only care is how much does it cost me by the month? So right away, we went from trying to rush to pay our debt back down to now that things are starting to improve, we're, we're, we're building up that debt again because nobody can see past that next week of that paycheck or that next month of the paycheck. And I think this is going to be, of course, we've said this for quite a while, the big problem here is going to be the debt bomb that's going to explode. And, and isn't anybody concerned at, at how big, again, the banks are growing? Isn't anybody concerned how much control that they are, that they are getting themselves into? You know, we know they're already powerful to begin with, but yet alone, they are in, in, in deep, deep, deep debt, okay? They've got so much money on the street, okay, basically. And again, I've said this, and this is an opinion. This is not fact. This is opinion that they do not have enough money in reserve to cover the amount that's on the street, okay? So basically, they continue to print this money and create this debt, getting people into, into deeper and deeper debt. And we continue to see with all these ads about, you know, borrow money, but it, underneath the surface, the banks continue to buy outside loans from all these third-party peer-to-peer lenders, and they continue to, to buy with reckless abandon. And, and we, we've all seen this movie before. When you are continuing to, to build this debt and borrowing money and lending out money on money you don't have and paying for these loans that are probably not good. Now, you would think of one thing for sure, okay? If I was a peer-to-peer lender and I'm getting, let's say, 6% uh, at loan value, okay, why would I sell that loan if I thought it was really good for 4%? Okay. Well, because why wouldn't I sell it when I, I can take all the risk out of the note? Okay. So the, ba- the banks, once again, in my opinion, are building dramatic amounts of debt and they don't care. Okay. And I, this is, again, one of the big problems out there is that they just don't care. And they have the Federal Reserve, as we say, to bail them out. And, and I think that that's always something to me that just shows at, at, at how ridiculous the Federal Reserve, the, the system is, because why should we let the banking system be irresponsible about the way that they're lending and then knowing that the Fed, which means you and me are going to get this, the op- we're going to get the wonderful opportunity to bail them out again. Okay. So to me, I wonder, okay, why we continue to, to, to let these same things happen over and over and over again when why can't we just say, hey, you don't have that much more because I, I see the massive regrowth of the banks. I see them continuing to, to create a bigger and bigger mess that is going to explode. And I think that is one of the big problems that we need to address, not the, the fact that there's other issues, but that, that we are allowing the same problems to repeat, which have been the major crisis in every big meltdown, which is we're letting the banks become too powerful and we're letting them get too deep in and with no exit other than a package from the Fed. This is Bubba's Bottom Line, Todd Bubba Horvitz. We're going to stop out of here for a break and we'll be back with more after the break of Bubba's Bottom Line. Hey everybody, what's up? And of course, always great to be with you. Uh, I want to remind you about our high school program, highschoolinvesting.com. We're struggling to to keep it afloat. We're going to try, but uh, we do need your help. If you'd like to help us continue to educate the youth of America, and that would be going to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Bubba Trading. That's Patreon.com forward slash Bubba Trading. And of course, we're being sponsored now by my good friend, Adam Barada, okay, who gold is a better way. And, and of course, he's offering away this book for free. And what you'd like to do, if you'd like to get a copy of your book, Gold is a Better Way, from my friend Adam Barato, which is Advantage Gold, all you have to do is go to BubbaTrading.com forward slash gold. That's BubbaTrading.com forward slash gold. Get my buddy Adam's book, Adam Barato, Gold is a Better Way. Now let's get back to Bubba's Bottom Line. Welcome back, everybody. Todd Bubba Horowitz with you right here on Bubba's Bottom Line and, of course, you know, we talked a little bit about the banks and, of course, we talked about the Fed. And, 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 you know, once again, the Fed is out there yapping and yapping, you know, trying to manipulate markets. And again, I do have respect for Jerome Powell. I do think of all the Fed chairs that I've known, and I, I go back knowing well through Alan Greenspan. So that's Greenspan, Bernanke, Yellen, and not Powell. I do think he's the, the, the most normal, 
<laughs> of a person who speaks in English. Okay, but again, I, I think that President Trump is 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 making a mistake, yapping about uh, about what the Fed is doing. Again, I think this is where one of the big problems that we we've come so reliant on the Fed is is that we don't want to let asset prices, asset classes price themselves. I think that's an issue. But, you know, again, that's just, just one man's opinion. But, of course, Greenspan is, is out yapping again. And why he comes out, I don't really know. I mean, I mean, he is the original bubble builder, okay? All of this crazy exp expansion came through the bubble building of Alan Greenspan and then continued on through. But now he's talking about that, that Trump's trade is insane. Okay, and, and I have to disagree. Now, again, I am not an economist, but I, I don't hold a tremendous amount of respect for somebody who can't tell me something's a problem until 10 years later. Okay, I happen to believe that, A, we will have a deal in place with trade with China, uh, at least verbally, by Christmas. I think the markets are signaling that. And again, you know, one thing we have to remember, the markets are always right in the way they price. So that, I would have to think, would be Okay. And, and I think that it's not Alan Greenspan's place. Now, you don't think that, that President Trump is just by himself saying we've got these trades. You don't think that he's not, is not consulting with, with Kudlow and all of his people around. You know, this is not, I don't think, a one-man decision. I, I believe that, that the president, whether you like him or not, is a pretty smart guy, and he kind of gets the art of the deal. So I think that, you know, I, I think we're all making too much of a deal about this versus letting it take its place because we've already seen that his deal making has become very, very solid and very good. So I think that it's, it's, it, it, it's better to stay out and let the, it take place and try to worry about it later if it doesn't work out. But I would be willing to bet and the market's already telling you based on what you're seeing in the equities that there's not going to be a problem. So I, I think that's an issue. Uh, and we have seen, you know, if we go back and look at last week, Grain prices, a little soft last week, but certainly not disastrous and certainly higher than when all this trade started. We are still big fans and want to be buyers in the agricultural space. I mean, I think that soybeans, wheat, and corn are tremendous buys here. I think corn's coming down to about 360 possibly. I'd love to be a, I'd love to step in there now. Wheat continues in that tight range. I think it's going to break out big to the upside. I think soybeans are going to take off. You know, and again, forget all about all these reports that you hear. It's again to me, it's all nonsense. You can see by the way markets trade. You can see by following what we call the tape or the underlying volume, the way they're trading of what looks to be happening. And of course, the meats look very solid. Uh, you know, a little bit of a rough week last week, but again, they all held some major key levels from a technical perspective. So for me, I go, again, I go continue to say that we believe the equities are going to break down. Okay. And again, this is not permanently, I'm not working. I'm, I'm only looking for a breakdown because it's, it's time. Okay. And again, it will sell off and it will come back in 10 years from now or whatever it will be. We will be an average of 8% higher as, as always. So I'm not a perma bear. I'm looking for a spot because again, logically, statistically, probability wise, the markets are due for a sell off at some point. And again, as we all know, we've said before, markets don't announce themselves. So we're looking to be a buyer because as the markets do sell off, I think that money will flow into the grain markets, okay, into the, into the commodities. You know, commodities have been under tremendous pressure as well. So I think that's the place. You're like, Green Acres is the place to be. Right now, I think commodities is the place to be. I think they offer the biggest return possible for the average investor and, and obviously professional investors as well. So we look for that opportunity. Gold came down last week and, and hit that beautiful 1200 support. And again, we thought that 1220 would hold, but it, but we knew the back door was 1200 held rallied nicely. I look for gold to continue to rally again. Our next target, if we can get through 1240 would be 1275. And I think we're going to most likely get there. I think that gold looks really solid. Again, everybody wants to worry about the relationship between the dollar and gold and commodities. Correlations only work over a very long period of time. You know, we continue to hear these multinational companies whine about the dollar. The dollar is too expensive. What are we? It's, that's such a crock. Okay. First of all, the dollar is hedgeable. So they could hedge their dollars against what's going on and not have this complaint. But of course, everybody needs 
that built an excuse. You know, my dog ate the homework kind of excuse. So to me, that's a bunch of bull. In the meantime, oil is getting clobbered, all right? And, and as you know, we puked out up at tops, but we did get back in. But in the meantime, oil is going down, and now it's below 58. Our next target would be 52 and then under 50. So we would expect, again, I'd be, it would be no surprise to me to see a rally in oil the next couple of days to get back to 58 or 60. That's just a place, that's just a selling opportunity. You know, you can continue to hear about OPEC and how they butchered what they were trying to do. And, oh, Iran's not, they have sanctions. You know, again, all a bunch of, you know what, it's all a bunch of stuff. It's like when you go out in the, in the dog run, if you step in something, that's what this is all about. All right. You can see clearly that, that oil is in trouble and it's headed lower. There's a massive supply. We've got a 200-year supply, and you weigh into the other facts, okay? And you can tell that OPEC may try to take a shot here as well. And, of course, we know they're crooks, so this is not something new, okay? So we, we, we see this continuation of oil going lower again. Don't be surprised to see a little bit of a rally. I, I never want you to be caught totally off guard. I want you to understand the function and how markets work, okay? Because if you see, for example... We had a little bit of a cold snap last week. And if you saw natty gas, natural gas, it went straight up parabolic. Okay, now again, that would look like an opportunity to sell for me. But again, th those moves are not surprises. You should never be surprised as markets get very oversold, there's going to be a big bounce. As they get very overbought, there's going to be a sell-off at some point. So that's understand the relationship and how the market itself works versus always worrying about, well, the fundamentalness. Fundamental news is crapola, okay? Only fundamental news bombs will drive the market, and very rarely will any of us be positioned properly for a fundamental news bomb unless you're trading the market from a technical standpoint, okay? Again, just remember, you buy stocks, you, you pick stocks based on fundamentals, you buy or sell them based on technicals. That will always give you the highest probability of a successful trade, Okay. Because, I, I, again, I, I think that one of the things that we have to understand is, is that things happen all the time, and markets change all the time. But what doesn't change is the market footprint and the technical analysis underneath the markets. We saw last week the cryptocurrencies, whew, they did break down a little bit. Now, again, we're still, we are still really believers in the crypto space. Uh, uh, but again, it, it was, it was ugly. I, I'd have to say it was ugly. I, I would say that now based on the action and we'll use just the Bitcoin, but Bitcoin probably has a chance to go into the four thousands. Now, uh, it actually had about an eight or 900 point that drop and got from, it went from 6,500, which was holding perfectly. And we thought was pretty solid and it did break down. So again, I'm a, in, in the crypto space, I'm staying in. Okay. I'm losing money and I'm not getting out. Okay, I am looking, this is what I would consider my lottery ticket type of trade. I, I don't trade them actively because to me it's not liquid enough and I don't like to trade it that way. But it is something that I like and I think that, I, I think that they're real. The, the real question is which one, ones will be left standing. But again, from a technical standpoint, you had a little bit of a breakdown. So you do not, you have now cleared the doors. I mean, right now is, is the nice thing about the crypto world is they do trade seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And right now they're a little bit higher this morning. But again, I would be concerned. But again, I'm not getting out and I'm not going to panic because this is what I tell you each and every time we talk about it. If you want to play in this space and you're not a trader, you just want to like invest, take the money like you're going to the casino and put it in some of the ones you like. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, hey, it happens. And, and that's the way that I would go ahead and look at this. We saw a little bit of a, a rally last week in the bond market. I mean, interest rates came a little lower, but Interest rates continue to creep higher. And again, you know, everybody says, well, that's not your black swan event. You know, a, a, a stronger dollar and, a, and, a, and higher interest rates. Well, again, it may not be a surprise black swan event, but it will create, in my opinion, the black swan in the markets. I think that's one of the issues that we always look for. So again, I think interest rates will go up. We're, we know the Fed's going to raise. And, and will Jerome Powell just hike them just because he wants to stick it to Trump? Again, there's always, you know, we never know what goes on in the minds of, of many. So it's something just to think about. And that would be something that I would ask you just to, again, 
I don't want you to be panicked. I don't want you to be afraid of it. I just want you to think about it, okay? In the meantime, this is Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz. We're going to stop out here for a break, and we're going to come back with my commentary. Bubba's Bottom Line. Hey, everyone. Just remember, we got a new friend of the program. Actually, always been a friend of the program, but Adam Barada from Gold is a Better Way, the president and owner of Advantage Gold. He's offering a free book. Here it is, Gold is a Better Way. Okay. You want to get your free copy? Go to bubbatrading.com forward slash gold. That's bubbatrading.com forward slash gold. You've heard Adam on uh, on the Bubba Show before. And so make sure you check out his book. And uh, of course, it's great. I loved it. And of course, I love his concept and ideas. And there's a lot of good things in there. So make sure you go check it out. In the meantime, let's get back to Bubba's Bottom Line. Welcome back to Bubba's Bottom Line. And it is Todd Bubba Horowitz. And of course, my commentary. And I've always got so many things to comment. I could comment about my trip last week to Vegas. But I, I do want to comment. I, I saw something very serious happen, uh, you know, in the investing world. And again, not a, not a, not a worldwide crisis, but, and, and, and it concerns me. You, you know, I've talked many, many times about the fear mongering that goes out there and about how the people that are actually looking to get into your pants pocket instead of taking care of theirs. And, and, and it always bothers me at, at, at all the, the fear mongering we see. Uh, because people want to create fear to get you to subscribe to what they're doing. The, the, you get a lot of mixed and, and BS results. And, and I find that to be extremely troubling. And, you know, I don't like, I, you know, I'm a big advocate in my mind for the underdog in, in life. And I, I hate to see people taken advantage of. And I hate to see people paying for big money for these programs that most don't work. And, and, and that, you know, they get they get sucked in and caught into having to do a lot of things that they didn't have enough money to do anyway. So even if the, even if it did work, the investor didn't have enough to invest anyways. But a very serious problem that we always talk about, and, and I think this is something that is, is worth noting. You know, many of you in the past, and maybe still, like to sell naked options because, you know, supposedly the, out, the way outside, the high probability model is never a problem. Right. And, and of course, many sell those types of services. And of course, many of those services went under over the last couple of weeks that were shorting options in oil and oil puts, shorting options in natural gas. Many of these big firms blew out. And of course, when that means when they blow out, they blow out their customers. OK, they didn't blow out. They got their subscription fee, but they did blow out their customers. And, and many of you who've been involved in these have gone from having your money in your account, whatever number it was, and all of a sudden you're going to get a bill from the the brokerage house saying, hey, your debit, you got to pay more money, okay? And, and to me, that's that's a tragedy because, I, I, again, as we like to always say here on Bubba's Bottom Line, there ain't no free lunch. There's nobody handing out $100 bills. So you have to understand. And, and so why would anybody want to put themselves in a position to risk it all for a very little bit amount of money. And, and, and that's always my concern. So I, I warn you, okay, to be very careful when you're playing in the naked option world. I have no problem with selling option spreads uh, where you have, you know, you're trying to get a credit. I have no problem with that. But why would you ever put yourself in position to get the nasty phone call that many are going to get in the next few days saying, not only did you lose all your money that you had in your account, you owe more money. And to me, again, that's a tragedy. It's a, it's, it's a lot of misleading information that is put out there on the streets. And it's marketed like, it's, like you're getting free money. And to me, I hate that. And, and I, I cannot stand it because it takes advantage of the hope that many of us have uh, of, of a better tomorrow. And, and, and again, there's so many better ways to do the same thing without creating the same amount of risk. But yet you see a lot of these option sellers go bust. And, 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 and to me, it's a criminal offense, number one, because I'd like to get their, all their subscription fees back, uh, which they won't get. But, uh, but again, I think it's, it's a, a total mislead of the public. Again, if you're really a professional and you understand it and you understand the risk, great. But most people don't, and they just get sucked in 
to a lot of this crap. And to me, again, as I've said on more than one occasion, there's no reason to ever sell naked options when you can create almost the same thing and reduce the risk by 95%. In the meantime, please be very careful out there. And for those who I don't see all the time, have a happy Thanksgiving, but we'll send a special message on Wednesday. Uh, in, the, in, in the meantime, we have football tonight, the Sunday night game. The Bears got flexed against the Vikings. And unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to go with the Minnesota Vikings for tonight's game. In the meantime, this is Bubba's Bottom Line, Todd Bubba Horwitz. Have a great week, everybody. It's going to be quiet. We will see you tomorrow with Bubba's Daily Update and next week with Bubba's Bottom Line. As always, I thank you. Have a great weekend. Bubba's Bottom Line.